Hey, I'm Haley Heath here with my friend Mark Woolley, and today we are talking about traffic um, a little bit more because you've really been great about educating me um, and the kids even with traffic. So tell me when you go to the store to go buy everything that you need to go out and set a trap. So if you want to catch a coyote or bobcat or have a major problem on your farm, what do you do? Okay. Um, well, there's there's a little bit of equipment that you'll need to do it. Um, when you're talking about trapping your, your bobcats and your foxes and your coyotes, it's a little bit more in depth than the coons and possums that we just talked about. Right. Um, and it requires a little bit more equipment. Um, need a good dirt pan sifter. Okay. So when you put your trap in the ground, you put your dirt in there that you remove from the ground, sift it back over your trap, make sure there's no rocks or leaves or anything that falls onto it that'll get in those jaws and prevent them from closing. Okay. So you need one of those. Um, I carry this hammer. It's a uh, it's pretty dirty there, but that's what it's for. It's called a groundhog. It's got this for digging. Okay. I can dig out a hole to put my traps in. Okay. To bed them. Um, I've got the hammer here to drive the stake, to drive the stake in the ground to anchor the trap, and okay. it also has a little shovel on this end that allows you to punch out a hole in the ground and remove that dirt so that you can you can put your bait down in there. Okay. And create a, you know, the hole creates a visual. But does the hole need to be the, at an angle, or do you do the hole straight down? What's the best way to do? You want it. You want it about a forty-five degree angle. You don't okay. want too much of an angle, and you don't want too too straight down. The the whole key is you're trying to line that fox or coyote or bobcat up so that he has to step where your pan is on your trap and get caught. Okay. Um, and so, if you do. A 45 degree angle you all set your trap you know roughly nine inches back from the hole okay the stride on a coyote that's going to put him about on top of your trap hopefully okay to see down that hole to see your bait that you have down that's there. good to know you got your hammer okay. um, then these are your traps and a little tank up, up. so you've got a trap this is a, a regular um, what they call a foothold or a coil spring trap and I've got them on a, these are disposable um, Berkshire stakes. Okay. So you take this little clip right here and stake driver. I wasn't prepared for that, but and it fits right in here like so. And you would drive that into the ground using the hammer. Okay. Once you get it down in the ground, up to the, to the loop there, you're gonna grab the whole thing and pull up on it and it's actually gonna take this clip that goes in the ground like this, and when you pull up on it, it's gonna flip it. So now it's in the ground and they can't pull that out. Okay. Uh, coyotes, especially when they're caught, they'll exert a lot of pressure okay. on these traps. And if it's not staked down properly, they'll pull out. Um, so. Now, when, they, when you buy a trap from the store, do you have to, do you buy it and then go put it out? I mean, do you need to do scent control or what? What do you yep, like there's to do a little bit of work involved. Uh, get your traps ready to go out and trap. When you buy them from the store, they're gonna come, uh, you know, in a shiny metallic finish. Right. You know, which That's is the I've metal that seen. the traps <laughs> made out of. And they've got a small amount of oil on the trap to keep it from rusting while it's sitting in the store or the warehouse. Okay. Um, so the first thing you're gonna need to do is get get a good degreaser, uh -huh. spray the trap down rinse it thoroughly you can power wash it you can boil it whatever get all that oil off because you want to remove that scent okay um, after that i like to let my trap sit out for you know a day or two get a small coat of rust on it okay and this is kind of confusing to some people because you want your trap to rust so you can dye it okay so that you can prevent it from rusting that okay? is confusing <laughs> but okay so, but that's what works. This trap right here, this trap has been dyed. It's also been waxed. We'll get into the waxing in just a second. But the dye takes that metallic color away from it. Mm -hmm. And much in a way that like a bluing of a firearm right. or a seracoding of a firearm prevents it from rusting, mm -hmm. the dye actually gives a protective barrier to this trap. Okay. And this trap's going to be in the ground, in the dirt. You all know there's moisture in the dirt. So if you don't protect it from rusting, you're going to have a rust bucket on okay. your hands very quickly. But you need a little bit of rust to get that dye to actually adhere to. Okay. Because the metal finish on this trap is real slick when it comes from the factory. That's um, awesome. Once you get your dye on there and it dries, um, 
I, I wax my traps. Some folks, um, they make a, a dip that you can dip them in that's not a wax. I prefer the wax. It's just a paraffin wax. And what that wax does is it seals this trap and seals off any scent. It, it creates important. a barrier over all this metal and uh, keeps the scent off of it. And then it also lubricates this trap and actually speeds it up. The wax is kind of slick, so it'll uh, it it'll speed this trap up and help it fire quicker. Okay. So. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for all of your help and continuing to educate me and the kids and everybody else out there watching on, on trapping because I know it's something that I've always been interested in, but it's hard to find somebody that traps yeah. and is willing to actually share with you how it works. Yeah. So yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mark. No problem. And I hope all of y'all have a good time trapping and good luck. Good luck.